one of our viewers asked this, would it be possible to do a quick tip on the color and value of cast shadows? Now she goes on to say, I've encountered contradictory approaches stated as fact on which colors to use. I will shed some light on some cast shadows. All right, cast shadows are caused because something blocks the light and causes a shadow. So a lot of people will think that the cast shadow will be the color of the thing casting the shadow. And that's where they get thrown off. The cast shadow itself is going to pick up or going to be caused, the color of the cast shadow is going to be caused by the local color on the surface onto which the shadow is cast. So if you can imagine here, the sun rays are coming right like this on this cow, relatively low down in the sky. The cow blocks the rays. The rays hit on either side onto the grass, but where the rays are being blocked, they can't hit anymore. And so that warmth of those rays is blocked out, causing us to see this not only darker, but cooler and actually slightly more neutral. So a, a good way to approach cast shadows is to think just in those terms. And then I go back to my color wheel, which I always do. The color wheel is kind of like the measuring cup for a cup. So if the, if the rays then, you can see it right here, you can look for this. The local color is in the yellow green range, range here. But if you look at that cast shadow, that's not yellow green. If I rotate this around, we'll see that's falling closer to blue-green. You see it right there. But it's not just blue-green, it's a lower intensity blue-green. Which means this blue-green is going to have to have a little bit of red-orange added into it to lower that intensity. If you think about that, that just makes sense because there's not the light there to cause the brilliance that we see here. So it's not a formula, it's something to look for. There might be times also, let me add this, although we won't see it here, there might be times when colors from other areas, perhaps even sometimes color on the subject itself, might, the, the light rays might pick up something of that color and bounce back into the cast shadow. Look for it. Go by your observation. But you can follow a principle of knowing what to look for and that makes it easier then to come up with the color that you need for your cast shadows. Now I'm going to go through three different kinds of cast shadows, different colors of cast shadows here, and just show you how we can think that thing through. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put a little piece of canvas right above so that you can see how it works right here. We'll just focus on the color of that cast shadow. Now, first of all, what I'll do is to come up with the color, the local color, and we see that local color is yellow green, so and it's a light. So I'll go to a light value of yellow green, and I'm, it's it's not very intense. It does have a little bit of a neutrality to it, so I'll just go as the yellow green and say that the neutral will pull a little bit of red into that, maybe too much, but let's see. And then I will just compare that. You could use uh, test strips, which I teach you how to do in a later quick tip. Little teaser there. But for the moment, let's just see that. See, there we, we're very close. So I'll just add this. I'll just put this right. This is just, I'm not trying to paint it as grass, just to show you the color. Now that color is on both sides. So, and it is the same color, same value right here, too. So let's just put that right here. Same value, same color. Now that is the local color onto which that cast shadow is cast. Now, I'll rinse the brush out. And I'll pull all that solvent out of the brush. Now how do we come up with that color? We have yellow-green, first key. It's dark. So we don't start with the light yellow-green, we start with the darker version of yellow-green. So I'll go right in here 
to a darker version of yellow green and just bring it right over here. Okay, now think that through. That darker version is a higher intensity and a warmer yellow green than our observation. Higher intensity and warmer. So we, we see that it needs to be cooler. We need to add some cool to it. We need, need to neutralize it very slightly. So I'm going to go into a dark version of red. That's the alizarin crimson. It could be any red. Dark version of red. Same value as this and a little bit a darker version of the blue. Now how much of that do we need to add into here in order to get the shadow color we're seeing? So I'll just start. I'll get it cooler first. Let's see now when I get it cooler it's very close but it still feels a little bit intense. So I add just a little bit of the red to it. Now I might have added too much. You really need to go slow and careful. No I didn't. You see there we're right on the button. There we have our shadow color. We put that shadow color right here. The thing about cast shadows you want them to feel like cast shadows. You don't uh, uh, if you just make them dark, like some people will just add black, well, that doesn't guarantee it actually feeling like a cast shadow when you do that. Now I'm going to do my little trick here, just push the brush up to get that kind of grassy feeling there, and push the brush up into this, and there you go. We have that cast shadow that we observed here by making the cast shadow, taking the local color, yellow green, adding cool, getting a little cooler, adding just a tiny bit of this complement to it, get it slightly more neutral, and we will have the color of the cast shadow. So there's the cast shadow of green. Now let's go and try another one. Now we can just set this right over here, just as a reminder of where we've been. And Let's go for a cast shadow of a red barn. Cast shadow that we would find on a red barn. We need to kind of nail that down a little bit right here and here. All right, we'll do it the same way. So this is the red lights hitting that red barn, calling, causing it to feel a little bit of a warm kind of red. And now this cast shadow is caused by a tree. A tree, apparently, this looks like foliage, that tells us that a tree is blocking the light rays. Light rays can't get in here. But they are shining very strongly on this part right here. So what we need to do is to begin with the local color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this again the same way. Where we... Anchor a little piece of canvas. You can do this kind of thing. Uh, you can find some photos. Actually, it works better if you do it if you go out in plain air and observe these things. But you can't always do that. But you can go on Pixabay and just look for things with cast shadows. You can do this kind of exercise. Helps you hone your skills on how to go about doing this. Now let me wash the grain out of the brush and let's get all that solvent out of the brush. All right, so first thing to do is to find that red. All right, so um, we get the value and the color. So I've got a little green crimson here mixed with white. And that's a little bit cool for the color of the uh, of the local color, the red. But I'll go ahead and find a place on the palette. I'll go ahead and oops, that picked up some blue and that that won't work. I have to be careful about that kind of thing. I'll just do it this way. Let's go up here. With the red, with the alizarin crimson, I'm going to add a little bit of white. You could do this any way. You could use almost any red and take it in that direction. Add just a little bit more of the alizarin crimson here. Show you how to think about this thing. Okay, that you can feel. Value's right. Not quite. It's a little bit warmer. That red is a tiny bit warmer. Warm yellow or orange. I could add either one into that to get that just a tiny bit warmer. Here we go. And that is very close. Get that just a little, probably going a little heavy on that. Let's try it again. That's very, very close 
very, very close to, we see variations of that local color here. All right, now, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just put some local color down on this canvas. Now, I'm going to do it a similar way as I did the grass because we need to see it on both sides. I'll just place some of this local color. And you can see this is a, this is a, a flatter color. We've got variations in here, but it all still reads as a similar local color. And I'll put it right here, put some right here so that then you can see how we how the cast shadow works in there. All right, now remember the formula? Not formula. I hate that word. I don't know why I said it. Remember the, the test, the, the, the uh, sequence that you go through asking yourself the question. You take local color, cool it. It needs to be a little bit cooler. Now let's just test. Let's find out. Put a little bit of this on the back. See right here and put it on top. Now, one thing that happens here is that the camera way overexposed that cast shadow. So we got to be careful we don't get it as dark as we see. About right in here is a good place. You can see it. It's cooler. See, it turns a little bit more towards purple, doesn't it? Cooler and darker and slightly more neutral. All right, so I'll go for the darker version of alizarin crimson. Let's put it right here. Let's see that darker version of alizarin crimson. Okay, that. That's in the that's about the same value range. Let's get that maybe just not quite so dark. The same value range. Now let's cool it just a tiny bit. Just and go back in. I'll go into the ultramarine blue. It's a good cooler. Always a good cool color to use for when you're doing cast shadows. Um, a cobalt blue works very well as well too. Let's see that did cool it somewhat. Uh, probably could use just a little bit more of that ultramarine in there. All right, that does it. Now it feels that it needs to be a little more neutral. All right, let's get the color wheel now and look at what we would do with, to get it a little bit more neutral. So we're in the red zone. You see it right here, kind of in the red zone. It leans a little bit more towards red orange, but we're pretty much in the red zone. So we can go right over here in the in the green zone, find our complement. We need to do it with the same value, so I'll just go right in here, pick up a little bit of that green. Doesn't take much. We don't want it to totally neutralize. We just need to get it slightly neutral. So I'll pick up a little bit of that green, put in there, and that begins to feel right. Now let's test it. Let's see if it does. All right. So here we are. Load that into the brush. Put it right here. And does that feel like cast shadow? I think I probably could stand to have that a little bit more neutral. You build a sensitivity to these things after a while. A little bit more neutral. That probably works better. And let's get some paper towel and kind of wipe that out of the brush. All right, here we go. Loading it with that. Let's push that right here. That feels more natural to me. That feels more like the natural feeling of the cast shadow that we see right here, you see, especially when you see it right in here. Okay, so that same principle, you see, it works with every color. Same principle. Now, let's try something else. Let's go to a, a more neutral color and see how the principle works. So let's put this one here so we can see where we've been. Not that it matters a whole lot, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, lift this one off. And here we got something we got something a little bit different. We have neutral. Neutral always confuses people. What do you do with the neutral? How does neutral behave? Well, almost every neutral you're going to see is going to lean towards some color because it's going to be picking up some color. It's going to lean towards some hue, I should say, because it's going to be picking up some hue. So go back to the color wheel. Now let's begin here. Now here, this is where I'm looking. This is this is my driveway in the fall, obviously. Um, we're seeing this is sort of a neutral color. This is cat this is blocking the sunlight. As we can see, you tell by the way the sun hits it over there. Sunlight is over there. 
This tree's blocking the sunlight, and we're getting this. Now, you see the same sort of thing happening. So first of all, we're seeing this as neutral but warmer. We could rotate the color wheel around here, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us because it's so neutral. We go up in here, and we begin to feel a little bit more of a relationship to these warmer colors. So we can read it as a warmer neutral. So what would you do? Well, come up with a neutral first. So what do we know about neutrals? We know that neutrals can be made with complementary colors. Again, going to the color wheel. So if I'm finding that as yellow-orange or orange, I can use blue and orange to create that neutral. So let's just go here for the blue, and I'll just start with about a middle value blue so I can see what I'm doing right here. Then, clean the palette knife, get my sheet of paper towel here. Then I go up here. Now this is a, this is a, uh, this is the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red, which is sort of, uh, it's in the orange range. So, I'm going to kind of lighten that up. I have it down here already lightened. Let's kind of lighten that up just a little bit. Let's have, let's have them pretty much the same value so we can see what we're doing. And just a little bit more of that dark in there. I want to keep them in that same value range. Okay, here we go. Now, well, because, it's, because I detected it was warmer, this neutral right here, I'm going to pull ultramarine blue into this, and I'm going to begin to mix, and you're going to see it, watch it fall, pop into a neutral right here, right in front of our eyes. You see those two going neutral. can't tell a whole lot about that neutral because it's so dark. It begins to feel right, right up here. Okay, so <laughs> we could work that backwards. Because it does seem so right for that right up there. Well, let's, let's, let's do it scientifically. So, now we see variations in value right here. Oops, I touched that with some paint, but that won't matter. So, I'm going to just lighten it with white first. Let's see what we get here when we lighten that neutral with white. Just think of neutrals um, as very low saturated color. Low saturated set means the hues have been hues of both those colors have neutralized each other. And we're very close right here. You see that? The back of my palette now we're very close to that area. So once again, let's put a little piece of canvas up here so that you can see it working. I'll just work it uh, two parts this time. Alrighty. Put that there and put that over there. So let's go with a very clean and dry brush and pick up some of this neutral light where the light's shining. You see the light, as the light hits the neutrals, the color is warm as well. So uh, you can observe this for yourself. Just look for the temperature change in where the light hits it and where the light can't hit it, where it's been blocked. And so, we see there, oh, I didn't have enough of that mixed. Maybe I can put enough down, just kind of scrub it in a little bit. Enough down so that you can see the effect of it. I think maybe we could get that just a little bit lighter. Okay, there we go. Tiny bit lighter. And this, just get a little bit of variation of light in there, like we see it here. A little bit more of that light into it. Okay, now, here we go. That's, that's probably good enough. It's not to, not trying to paint the driveway, and just trying to get the color so that you can get the point of how shadows work color and value. Alright, so that neutral then, when the light blocks it, blocks out the light, blocks out the warmth. It's got to be cooler. So we've got that. We've got this right here. We've got the mixture here. So what we can do is go back to that mixture and this time mix with a little bit. Mix it a little bit and let it lean a little bit cooler and darker. And that looks like it right there. Now with the neutrals, you don't have to add the neutral back in because the neutral's already there. So when you're working with neutrals, 
you're looking for how it leans towards here. So it's warmer here, that neutral leans a little bit more towards cool, therefore a little bit bluer. Or at least that's how it looks here. And you see when I compare the color of my palette knife, that's the way it works. A little bit cool, there it is right there. So let's put, let's put that uh, there beside, let's get that color. The cooler and darker, right here. No, oh, it didn't mix enough. Let's pull it this, this way so that you can watch it work. Cooler and darker. There we go, right there. I may have gotten that a little bit too dark. I think I did. And so what we'll do is to lighten it. There again, we have to be careful about photographs because photographs are going to show it, going to show the cast shadow darker. Then when we see, then we see the cast shadow if we are there looking at it in, in the real, in in plain air. So you see, as I get that lighter against, as I get that uh, neutral lighter against the, uh, against the lighter part, there it begins to feel more right. So there you go. If you it, remember that when you're working with neutrals, as neutrals fall in the shadow, you observe it for yourself. You can look for them to go cooler. You can also look for other colors to be reflecting back into them, but look for them to go cooler first, and then look for them, uh, look for the value change. To what degree are they changing values? But when you're working with colors that are more saturated than neutrals, those colors, you can look for it, you can see it. They will take on the local color. They will get a bit cooler. They're certainly going to get darker. So the value changes to darker the saturation or intensity changes to slightly uh, more neutral and the temperature of the thing will change to cooler. So you just look for those things. You will know then how to create your cast shadows so that they look like cast shadows and they don't look like just dark paint. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.